there we have it. It's the Catalan. Very professional choice by Vidit. That's the way to go against Magnus, not giving him uh, the chance of choosing his opening. He has to kind of... Wow, but hang on, we are ahead. Let me not score <laughs> the fun. And she just happened. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the board, the cameras, uh, sometimes the moves will come in bunches. Uh, that is not up to us. We apologize for any inconvenience it may cause. And we see Magnus Carlsen. He is waiting, thinking, trying to figure out his move. And he's adjusting all his pieces before developing the knight. Yes, and I like this. I like this attitude. I also very much prefer first to shadow all my pieces before I start the game. Otherwise, I feel like my arm is not yet ready for the battle. And there it is, G3 played the Catalan that you were mentioning. So white aims the fiend Keto that kingside bishop to get on the longest diagonal, while black's light square bishop typically is not nearly as strong. So uh, Magnus, he's been spending a bit of time in the early going, bit it moving instantly. And building that lead on the clock, Peter, that's really important in these quicker time controls. Yes, it's important to control the clock. Uh, we have also seen in Magnus' case that uh, yesterday, surprisingly, in the first couple of games he was rather slow and then he got his rhythm. And there we go, bishop d4 check, bishop d2. It's a standard way of... Ah, oh, wow, Magnus goes for the trade. Usually people uh, retreat the bishop to e7. You see that trade of bishops and then a strike with d5 from Magnus Carlsen. So, uh, d5, the last move played and bid it. He's just... Uh... It looks like the c5 was played by Magnus as well, so we will uh, get these moves into bunches. Uh, but now Magnus, uh, so far in the opening, he spent a little bit of time, Peter, but now he's found his footing. Yeah, d5, knight f3, c6, yeah, that's kind of a very solid system from black. Uh, black is trying to be as solid as possible. Normally the idea is to go knight bd7, then go b6, uh, try to develop the bishop depending on situation on a6 or on b7 and eventually force white to release the tension or with his c4 pawn yeah any kind of c takes d5 c takes d5 structures are possible later on because white will try to keep uh, that tension as long as he can that makes sense because especially with, if black takes back with the c pawn then the knight can hop out to c6 oftentimes you wait for black to develop that uh, knight on the uh, d5 so now you're getting right into it i see all your arrows there peter you uh you're doing a great job uh, giving all the highlights, but for Magnus Carlsen, he popped away from the board, he's right back in his chair, and now he's actually ahead on time, so he may have spent a few seconds in the early going, and here the moves are coming in bunches, but your plan is being played b6, develop the light square bishop, and it's a very solid position.
game against somebody else, Magnus, he's incredible. He's just the end game maestro that we just have to appreciate. Yeah, and look at this lovely little final touch, also an idea, because basically I'm calling it a final touch. I feel like with this move, with it, hopes are ending right there. Knight c6 check is coming, kicking away the king, targeting the e5 pawn, and then there will be a free runway for the b pawn. And it's why knights are so bad at chasing down pawns, because uh, they can attack the pawn, but as soon as it moves, and you attack it again, the pawn can keep moving. You can't get your piece in front of it and attack it. And the king goes after this G pawn, but don't resign, don't knock the king over. It's white's king that will be tipped over soon here. This is now at this stage for Magnus, and it's a walk in the park. Yeah, clearly white is collecting the G4 pawn, but the B pawn will cause the knight, and the knight takes care of the rest. No hopes here for a minute. He would need to be able to take Magnus' B pawn, and then bring his king all the way up into the position, but it's asking for too much. And then for Magnus, he already is going to grab that queen in his hands because the only way that Vita can stop is by sacrificing his knight. And here in B2, that's game over. Well, but first knight c6, very professional. <laughs> After king f6, knight d4, yeah, that you protect, you make sure that you can never ever run into any Jewish construction. Very nice play. Fantastic play by Magnus. And I love it because it wasn't actually necessary, I don't believe, but it's so professional as you call it. Don't even give it any hope at this stage of the game that the king could have run around. King f6, knight up to d4, and oh, a uh, little modal up here, which means that Magnus Carlsen, he's just uh, he's the champ. Yeah, we did give knight c5 check. It feels like it's gonna be the last move of the game. And the beep on Queens, it's all over. And for Vidic Gujarati, he there is the handshake. Magnus Carlsen, he earned every bit of that point. And you see Vidic talking, I'm like, where did it all go wrong for me? And it just felt like suddenly I was in the back foot.